It's finally here in the cave, the light gun that promises to end all light gun problems, the Sindon light gun. Hello cave dwellers. Many of you will be familiar with this already because we got to see the prototype of this all the way back in April of 2019. It seems like forever ago. It was forever ago and finally the retail product has landed and today I get a chance to test it out and to see if it lives up to all of those claims. And just before we open that box, I must say a big thank you to monsterjoysticks.com, purveyors of not just joysticks, but also adapters and everything you need to game on both modern and retro systems with your ideal choice of joystick. And of course, they've got their own fabulous joystick range. Check them out, monsterjoysticks.com and oneclickprint.com. Whatever you need your photo printed on, whether it's as a glossy poster, on a mug, on a metal sign, they can print on just about everything and they deliver globally. Now let's go back to that video in April of 2019 when Andy, Andy Sindon, the namesake of the gun, came to visit the cave and show it off to us. And I have to say, I was impressed. If you saw that video, you would see that I was impressed. It held up to every game that I threw at it. And despite being a prototype, it looked pretty good in that 3D printed gun case that mimicked the Namco G-Con 45. But a very important factor of that video that shouldn't be overlooked is the fact that Andy chaperoned the whole thing. We used his laptop, he set it up. I didn't touch any of the settings. I just stood there with the light gun and had fun playing games. So now that it's come to market, what's the reality of the thing? Does it play as well? Is it easy to set up? Is it plug and play? Who's this aimed at? Well, we're gonna find out today and we're not just gonna test it. We're gonna test it to the limits. We're gonna test it on a projector. We're gonna test it on a 50 inch curved screen to see how it manages on that. And we're gonna see if this is the light gun to end all light guns. So let's just recap on what the promises made on that original Kickstarter are so we can set the expectation for today. On that Kickstarter in 2019, it promised to be the world's first modern display compatible light gun that required no additional hardware. So there shouldn't be a need for any external sensor bars. It promised an end to laggy light guns for modern displays. We saw on things like the aim track gun, which I reviewed a long, long time ago, that it just felt laggy and horrible in a Wiimote style, dragging the cursor or the crosshairs across the screen. It promises to do away with that. It promises Windows compatibility, and at the time on Kickstarter, possibly Linux and Raspberry Pi, which of course is based on Linux based setups. And it promised recoil, which we didn't have on the prototype. So I've not experienced that at all. And that'll be interesting to see how well that works. So let's get our first look at the retail gun itself. Here it is on the table. Available in blue, red or black. I've got the black gun here. This is it in its injection molded final form. And you can immediately see this is I'm going to say a ripoff of the Namco G-Con 45 is exactly the same as that. Here's the PlayStation version of that G-Con for uh, comparison. Put it on top and it's practically identical. It's also got more buttons down the side. It's got a four directional D-pad, two buttons on one side and two buttons on the other side. The orange tip means you won't get shot if you carry it down the street. That identifies it as a toy. And if you look into that tip, you can see the technology behind the Sindon light gun. It's a camera. And we'll learn a little bit more about how that works when we come to set it up shortly. Because it's the version with the recoil unit in, it is quite weighty. And I have seen on forums people that didn't take the recoil option, looking for ways to weight it up, <laughs> looking for ways to make it feel a bit more solid because that obviously adds a lot of weight in there, the, the solenoid or whatever's in there to give that kick. So no real surprises on the design then. Things that would have been nice would have perhaps been a bit more texture on the grip that would have felt nice in the hand. And the buttons and the D-pad themselves, they don't feel great, but they are slightly smaller and the action is lower than that of the Namco, which just feels a little bit nicer to press, but I'm really splitting hairs here. So long as they work and they work every time you press them, that's fine. And the proof of that will be in the gameplay. So I haven't plugged this in yet, what I want to do is just take some time to plug it in, configure it, see how it goes for me as a brand new user to this device. And then I'm going to report back to you with any problems I had and how successful this is at the setup stage. And then we're going to play some games. Now I won't talk over this little montage too much because I was still figuring it all out at this point. And yes, you can use the gun, as a webcam if you want to, but the games I chose were my favorites and those suggested by the official cave dwellers. And they included Point Blank, in which you can hear that recoil unit in action.
I also played some Duck Hunt. Notice these are 4 by 3 aspect games, so the curve of the monitor doesn't really come into play as much with these particular games and the white border I've reduced to the play area. Virtua Cop 1 and 2, another classic pair of games. And not all of these are technically light gun games. Operation Wolf, which you'll see later, uses a gun controller that isn't actually a light gun. And in games where you hold down the trigger, like Alien or Operation Wolf, you can switch the recoil unit to automatic. So it's repeatedly recoiling, but the novelty of that, I must admit, did wear off quite quickly. Well, I got it up and working, as you can see, and if you're expecting to just plug this thing and play with it straight away, you'd be very, very wrong. There's a lot of configuration. If you're lucky, not so much, but it all depends on your setup. And just think about all the ways this is gonna be used in an arcade cabinet with a modern screen with perhaps a piece of glass over the top, on a curved screen, on a projector, with the sunlight bouncing off the screen. There are so many variables that the configuration tool really reflects that. And it's quite daunting when you first load it up. There's no less than nine tabs along the top, each stuffed full with options. And actually, if we go back to a clip of the prototype video in 2019, we're seeing the configuration page here. Compare it to the configuration page now, just so much more has been thrown at it. And yes, that could probably be broken down into more subsections, maybe advanced sections to hide some of the options at first. There are lots of ways to do it, but actually I think the kind of people who are gonna be buying this will appreciate that because I'm talking about arcade builders. I'm talking about people who are used to setting up front ends and emulators and all of their peripherals. They're used to tweaking any files and well, let's be honest, a lot of us spend more time tweaking our arcades and our setups than we actually do playing the damn games. And this is no different. Now this whole thing works by putting a border around the screen. That's effectively your sensors. The camera on the gun looks at the screen, it sees the border and it works out exactly where you're pointing at the screen. Quite a simple concept that's um, very slickly pulled off with this gun. But because this is a curved monitor, when the camera looks at the screen, actually that border gets thinner and thicker to the point where at some angles the border disappears. And you can see that because you've got a preview on the screen here. If I move my hand out the way, you can see the white border and the blue detected screen there. So actually a curved screen is not ideal for this at all. Now you can get around that by making the border thicker. I had to actually introduce two borders. I had a black border and then the white border. And the reason for that is the bezel on this is so thin that um, the camera can't identify between the bezel and the white border. I had to artificially make the bezel on the screen bigger. So that eats into a bit more of your game. You can adjust how big, how thick, and how fat the border is or how skinny the border is. It all comes down to your, to your setup. What I can tell you is it works. There is a sweet spot. I found the sweet spot on this to get it working, but you've got to tweak it and you've got to adjust it according to your, um, your environment. So I won't go into the specifics of all of the options. There are some great setup guides out there on YouTube to help you. Just wanted to make you aware that you will need to spend some time setting up. And I had to enable the recoil option in there and tick a disclaimer to say I won't set it off too near children's ears, although I don't think it's that loud. Uh, and the recoil should go off if it's pointing at the screen. And then if I'm pointing away, it doesn't. So you can use that for a reload effect. Or pulling this, even though it um, sets the solenoid off, is exactly the same as shooting off the screen. So you can keep pointed at the screen and you can reload like that, which is actually a really handy thing. So enough about the setup, how did the games play and go? Well, because of the way this is detected as a mouse, I had no problems whatsoever getting it to work with emulators. I had the usual tweaks that I had to make, things like disabling the crosshair because I found it was more natural when you didn't see the crosshair, um, those kind of tweaks, but they're all emulator specific. As a device, it's basically a mouse. So if it's got mouse support in your emulator, it will work. And that works from everything from this, the Wavy Tube Man Chronicles, which is an awfully brilliant game in the style of those old American Laserdisc games like Mad Dog McCree. 
if you've got a light gun, seriously, get this for, I think it's one pound on the Microsoft Windows Store. Um, so that's a Windows native game that worked perfectly. Main worked perfectly, you saw point blank. There are elements of that game where you're very quickly going from one side of the screen to the other to shoot things. And there's never that feeling that you're waiting for things to catch up. There's never that feeling that you're waiting for things to drag across. Once you've got the settings perfect in the configuration tool, that is, it felt a bit off to begin with. Um, and then calibration is sometimes an issue because the camera is not always in the same place, I'm sure, in every one of these that comes out of the factory. So there is a tool to calibrate. Or if you're mid game, you can step around, you can walk around, you don't have to stay in the same spot. But if you feel things are a little bit off, you can hold down the left button on the D-pad for three seconds and it will just recalibrate, reset itself from where you are and you're away again. So that's a nice little feature. So first impressions are really good. I'm as impressed with this as I was with the prototype and it's great to see it in its final form. But we're not done yet. Let's put it to a real test. Let's fire up the projector and see if we can recreate the feeling of those old American Laserdisc games like Mad Dog McCree, which used to have a huge screen in the arcades in the early 90s. And I wanna recreate that feeling and see if we can defeat Mad Dog once and for all. Just notice something while setting it up on the projector. As I've dropped the resolution down to support the projector to 1024 by 768, I've noticed that the frame rate of the camera has jumped up to 60 frames per second. I think it was like 20 to 25 before. Um, so it seems like by lowering the resolution, it's stressing the system less and we're getting a much more responsive rate. And I've also been able to disable the secondary border because there's a natural black border anyway around how I've got the projector set up. So we've just got the thin white border and uh, this could produce some interesting results at that much higher frame rate. Let's load a game up. And for a second opinion, I invited Mark to come and have a go on the gun and give us his thoughts. Yeah, impressions wise, the weight is good, it's quick and it's accurate. But what do I have to compare against? Um, I haven't played a light gun game in an arcade for a long time. And um, I seem to remember I was awful at those. So maybe this is more accurate because I seemed a lot better on this big screen. Controls wise, um, I wish maybe the cable was coming out of here rather than here, because I like to hold the gun like this. Um, and this button maybe could be a little bit bigger, but it's not really a problem once you get used to it. So um, all in all, I think the Sindon light gun is a, a big hit, yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Does the retail version of the Sindon light gun live up to the expectations set in 2019 with the prototype? Absolutely, and I think you've guessed that by now, by the way I've been talking about it today. I love this thing. And uh, on, a, on a projector here, it takes it up to a whole nother level. And if there's any way whatsoever that I can find to mount the projector up above me and have a permanent screen set up for visitors here in the cave, I think you guys are gonna love it when you come to try it as well. Thank you to Mark for giving us his first impression. It truly was his first impression, the first time he touched this gun. And it's nice to hear someone else confirm my thoughts on it. And a big thank you to Andy Sindon for sending this in to us. Links to find out more about the Sindon light gun are all in the video description down below. And as always, thank you for watching. Take care and do leave me your thoughts on light gun games in the comments section below. What would you like to see played in future or set up for visitors to try when they come to the cave? Take care everyone, bye bye.